Good morning from the beautiful and historic downtown Winter Park, which is a city just a little bit north of Orlando. That's kind of not really off the beaten path, but it's not known by a lot of tourists. And the reason we're here is not only because Winter Park has wonderful shopping and wonderful places to eat, there's also something else here, something really hidden. Not the Morse Museum, not the golf course, but the scenic boat tour. Let's go on a boat tour. Here we are at our destination for the scenic boat tours. Here's a little description of it. The Venice of America, 12 mile, one hour tour through lakes and canals. It's $14 for adults and $7 for children. So it should be noted, this is the type of boat that we're gonna be on and there is no covering on it. So I'm trying to get here. This is the first tour of the day and I'm hoping that it's not too hot. It's 10 a.m. It really is a very beautiful chain of lakes. And this is an interesting area too because there are a lot, a lot of really nice houses out here too. Here we go, we are off. Famous cruise. <clears throat> and of course, I'm expecting to see everybody tonight at the midnight buffet. It's on the lower level, okay? <laughs> Ooh, we're going pretty quick. Nice. Uh, my name is Wendell. I'm going to be your guide for the next hour. This is Lake Osceola, named after the famous Seminole Indian leader, Osceola. We're going to go through three of the lakes. And the canal in front of us is the Fern Canal, and the Fern Canal has a low bridge. If I should say quack, quack, what are you going to do? Tuck. Wow, somebody <laughs> had a cup of coffee early this morning. So does anybody on the boat feel like singing It's a Small World after that? Just kidding. What am I supposed to say? Tuck. I'm glad somebody was paying attention. Wow. How low can you go? Oh, I really do have to duck here. <laughs> At least you can see why we don't have a canopy on the boat. Right. So do you all see the ladder going up the tree over there? Now that ladder has always traditionally been used by birds who can't fly. So what sort of birds come to Florida that don't fly? Snowbirds. Snowbirds, duh. It only gets worse. <laughs> Look at these houses. These are so nice. They're just building that house right there. That is a gigantic house. Yeah, there was house. a big house over there. But the people who owned it felt it wasn't big enough. So guess what they were doing to their big house? Making it bigger? Making it bigger, can you believe it? A bit of history, Charles Morse moved down from Chicago, helped co-found the city and the college. And their daughter Elizabeth built a white villa over there in 1938 as a winter home. In fact, she married a doctor up there. Now listen, his name was Dr. Genius, so that's the Genius Estate. You know, I'm still trying to figure out, did she become a genius when she married the doc, or was she already a genius? In any case, their daughter Jeanette, who was a genius, started a museum downtown Winter Park, named it after her grandfather, the Charles Morse Museum. Have any of you been to that? Yes. It's the world's greatest collection of? Tiffany glass. Louis Tiffany stained glass. Show. It's a great place to visit and cheap. Unfortunately, it is closed on Monday. <laughs> Up ahead is 40 acres of nature preserve that will not be developed. Somebody told me there were some alligator nests back in there. So the mom alligator takes her big long tail, and with her tail she gets a whole bunch of those plants together in a big pow, lays her eggs in the center of the pow, then takes her tail and covers it all over with mud and it becomes an incubator. And 60 days later, voila, out come a whole bunch of little baby wiggly alligators. Depending on the temperature inside the incubator, they come out either male or female. So what do you think? Are the males on the hot side or the cold side? What do you say? Hot. hot? Hot wins it on this one. Normally it would be cold, okay? But in the alligator family, the males come out all hot-headed. It's the females that come out cool, calm, and collected. No, actually, if it's 93 degrees and hotter in the nest, they come out all male. If it's 86 degrees and colder in the nest, they come out all female. And if it's in between that, they come out some male, some female. So it all depends on whether the nest is in the shade or the sun. People have a chandelier hanging from their tree. 
So the people paid $3 million for the house which was there, which they tore down, so you can only imagine what it looked like inside. And they've been looking up, working on this house for over six years, you can only imagine what it looks like inside. But it is the most expensive house per square foot in Winter Park. So I'm looking for the name of two, three, four countries that you think represent that architectural style. What countries, architecturally, what do you think? Spain. Spain, sure, Granada. Italy. Italy, yeah, that would act very well. I think of uh, Venice. Morocco. Morocco, oh. that would be at the top of my list. And uh, you know what I like to call it though? Confused Mediterranean. <laughs> but I think a lot of people would like to call it home. I thought somebody would be asking me who lives there. A rich person. <laughs> you see the other ramp over there where the sailboat is? I saw an otter playing on that some time back and it was very cute. Folks, you ought to seen it. <laughs> hey, I said the jokes would get worse. I'm a man of my word. Back underneath the bridge here. Oh, gotta get down. It's very low. Now I'm assuming you've all seen your fair share of large trees here, right? But look at the large live oak tree to the left of us full of Spanish moss. That tree is estimated older than the United States of America, over 250 years old. Just consider all the hurricanes that it's had to survive. But isn't that a magnificent tree? We're back in the first lake now. Now I have a little story to tell you. Do you all like the his and her boat house over there? Do you like that? It's one of the first houses built on the lake back in 1898. It's the Brewer Estate. Mr. and Mrs. Brewer lived up in Cortland, New York, and he had a carriage business back then. And he would come down here to buy his lumber for his carriages. Fell in love with this lake, wanted to bring his wife down, spend the winter. Why not? One major problem. She didn't want to leave the very fancy home he built for her up there. So like any good husband, he built an identical home for her down here. Identical. What a house. <laughs> what a husband. And this is the Palmer Avenue Bridge. Some of you might have to duck. Some of you might not need to duck. I hope you know in which group you're in. The cypress tree root structure, they're called cypress knees. And you can see right over there that it's not really an area that you'd want to run through barefoot now, is it? Do you see them over there? Uh, they don't grow in the trees, they're just part of the root system. So what does that make this canal? A root canal! Oh. Come on everybody, groan, grab your jaw. Dang. That was a painful joke. Yeah, this is a nice little city park. It's called the Craft Azalea Garden Park. And you all see the monument thing with the columns over there? Does anybody have an idea what that's used for today? What would you use that thing for besides taking pictures? Wedding. Absolutely, backdrop for weddings. I was hoping somebody on the boat would be in touch with their romantic side. <laughs> so I was working on the boat on the 10th of October, 2010. 10, 10, 10. And there were like 10,000 people getting <laughs> married there that day. Everybody wanted to get married on 10, 10, 10. Fun fact, we got initiated into Girl Scouts at this park. I'll have to try to find that video for you guys. Now these three big houses have an interesting contrast between them. The big white house was built in 1918. The house in the middle, just five years ago. The house to the left, just four years ago, finished right at Christmas time. What a Christmas present. All right, folks, let me see your hands in the air. Which one of you on the boat's building the new house over there? Come on, who's doing it? Which one? Let me see who's doing it. Hey, we can all dream. So I'm going to mess with you a little bit. I'm going to read your minds. I'm thinking that you're thinking how much do these houses cost? Am I right? So the average price of a house on all these lakes is four million and up. Did you get the word up? Yeah, emphasis is on the word up. 
Now, and the canal's only one to two million dollars, so that's the poor side of town. <laughs> and the houses are lived in year round by doctors and lawyers, professional people, a lot of business owners live here, but nobody very famous lives on these lakes anymore. Just your average, ordinary, run of the mill rich people. <laughs> little bridge goes into a man made island, and they made that island in the shape of the Isle of Sicily, so that's what they call it. Now, it's 11 acres, 11 magnificent homes. This happens to be one of the newer houses on the island, and that one over there, one of the older houses. But I do have some very bad news for you. I don't own any of those houses on that <laughs> island. Otherwise, there'd be a big party for us all there tonight. Woohoo! <laughs> it's very shallow. You can see the bottom. The three big houses in front of us are sort of interesting. The big tan house has a large outdoor swimming pool. But that swimming pool takes a turn and goes inside the house. So you have an indoor outdoor pool, which is not too bad. Then the house right next to it, the one behind all the trees, that house was built for specifically for somebody who was almost seven feet tall. I wonder what he did for a living. Basketball player? Hey, Horace Grand played for the Orlando Magic. And when he was traded to the L.A. Lakers, guess what the new owners of that house had to do? They had to go in and lower all the cabinets and countertops. People ask me, do these lakes ever flood with all the pretty homes right on the edge of the lake? But no, there's a dam, so it keeps the height of the water regulated, even in hurricanes. However, 17 years ago, there was such a drought that the water dropped so low that you could actually walk through these canals on dry ground. So the city of Winter Park took advantage of that and redid all the sides of the canals at that time so they were all new from then. But you did notice, didn't you, that they didn't bother to straighten the canal out. It's mm -hmm. still as crooked as ever. A big fish back there. Two is a winter resort for rich people the rich people up in boston and new england hence the name winter park fact is at one time there were more millionaires per capita living in winter park than any place else in the united states that was in the late 1950s now i'm guessing that some of you might remember the old expression it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood do some of you remember that mr. Rogers. yeah mr rogers <laughs> Mr. Rogers lived there in that red brick house when he was a student at Rollins College, class of 1951. He met his wife while he was a student at the college here. And you can certainly see where he got that expression that he always used on his TV program. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, won't you be my neighbor? So that's the question I've been waiting to ask you the whole trip. Would you have liked to have grown up in Mr. Rogers' neighborhood? Yeah. Yeah, you and me both. Well, folks, we are headed to a very, 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 very famous and historic spot. It's the Winter Park Scenic Boat Tour Dock. <laughs> we started way back in 1938. We've been going ever since, which makes us the longest continuously running tourist attraction in all of Florida. And no, I am not one of the original boat captains, thank you. Well, I've sure enjoyed having you all out on the boat today. First trip of the day. I hope you enjoyed it and come back and see us again sometime. Thank you. Yay. So there you go. That was our trip on the Winter Park Scenic Boat Tour. My, our captain was amazing and comical and I loved it. I loved it a lot. So, I don't know. I highly recommend if you're looking for something kind of off the beaten path, come out here to Winter Park, view some historical homes, view some million dollar homes, and just kind of like take in the scenery. A lot of fun. So with that being said, we are off. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Now it's time to pay the price. <laughs>